So the first update that we're going to be talking about today is the rolling forecast update. So those of you who are familiar with PBCS might say, well, we've already had rolling forecast functionality within PBCS, um, and that is true. So we've always, we've always had that. Um, what this month is doing is it's actually implementing that for ePBCS, and specifically for the financials and projects module of ePBCS. So not yet enabled for workforce or CapEx, um, but the financials and projects certainly are. So this is a really great way, you know, for your organization to maybe shift some of your forecasting processes from, you know, instead of just saying we're going to have one year of outlook, uh, and as we gain actuals throughout the year, we're essentially uh, subtracting one month that we forecast each forecast cycle. With a rolling forecast, you know, we are continuously forecasting, uh, you know, a 12-month, an 18-month, a 24-month. Um, could also do that by quarters as well, so a four-quarter you know, uh, a 12 quarter and an 18 quarter, just kind of depends on how you want to look at it there. And then if we go on to this next slide here, I um, can just show you some of the screenshots from within the application to show you how easy it is to set up rolling forecasts within, uh, within your application. So the first thing that you'll want to do, um, for those of you who have not tried this, is simply drag your period and year dimension on any data form to your columns. So once the, the time dimension and the year dimension is on your column, uh, you're able then to right-click on the column uh, section of the form, and you'll now see a rolling forecast set up available to you. Now, again, this is only going to be applicable when you have the period and year dimensions on your column. Uh, if you do not have that kind of set up in the data form, uh, that won't be an option for you. Once you're able to click the rolling forecast setup, uh, you'll see a nice little menu displayed for you. Um, and the first piece there is the prefix. So just as a test, um, we've gone ahead and, and typed in vision, uh, RF for rolling forecast, and 24M for 24 months. So in this case, we're going to set this up for, for 24 months. Um, you can then set your start year and start period. So in this case, we're assuming that uh, fiscal year is starting in July for this organization. And again, we're going to implement a 24-month rolling forecast here. I also have just a nice uh, kind of disclaimer or definitions around each of those uh, properties within the rolling forecast setup menu. Um, just kind of some helpful things and kind of reiterating, you know, what I've gone over there. Um, I will say as well, if you look, there's a check mark uh, where it says reuse existing substitution variables. If you want to use a prefix or a substitution variable that you've used before, uh, you can go ahead and, and check that and it will allow you um, to, to leverage them on a different form, for example. So once we generate um, or click the generate button from that menu, and if you were to go into your uh, manage substitution variables menu, you're now going to see um, in that name column all of these different uh, subbars automatically created for you. So in the past, this is you know certainly available. You know even on an on-prem application, you could create all these subbars from scratch. You know it would take some time, take some time to implement it on the form as well. This rolling forecast setup essentially does all that for you. So really decreases the amount of maintenance that it takes to support and also implement rolling forecasts within your organization. So anyone that's considering moving to a rolling forecast, you know, would highly recommend PBCS or ePBCS to facilitate that. Uh, I think it does a really good job of managing uh, and controlling those rolling forecast scenarios.